Hi, so today we're going to talk about the install and upgrade of web services for Microsoft Dynamics GP, specifically the 18.2, 18.3, and 18.4 versions, because the installs and upgrades of those get a little different than what we're used to with prior versions. And we have a blog out on this information that I'm going to go over in this video. It's just that we wanted to add the video blog just to give a little more information. And that way you have a reference to like a step-by-step -step, uh, going through the process. So if you ever have any questions from the blog, hopefully this video will help answer those questions for you without having to open up a support case. Uh, the first thing we want to do is when you're planning to install or upgrade uh, Dynamics uh, web services is to look at what version of GP you're actually on. Uh, in my example here, you can see I'm on 18.4. And the reason why we need to know that is if you're on uh, Dynamics GP 18.2 or 18.3, my recommendation would be to download this MDGP Fall 2020 DVD. And the reason for that is if you dig into it and go into web services here, uh, there's a specific um, service pack for web services, uh, the KB4527536, and that's already part of this DVD. And why that's important is without that service pack, the web services won't work. It won't install um, correctly, and it won't work. Um, so... By using this DVD, we have the correct media and we have the correct service pack. And uh, it isn't enough for us to manually apply this service pack to like if you have an existing web services, that won't work either. Uh, we have to basically slipstream it through a DVD, which is saying that we have to have it in the DVD that we um, use to install it. So if you were getting ready to upgrade web services, meaning you have an existing web services, what you would do is you would want to leave the GP database objects alone, but you would uninstall the web services code itself from control panel and then use the DVD to install web services. And then when you launch the configuration wizard, which we'll see in a little bit here, it would give you the option to upgrade if you had an existing uh, install already there. If, you, if it's a brand new install, then you wouldn't have to worry about it. You would just install with the, um, the the correct media, depending on, again, which version of GP you're on, and you know, then run the configuration wizard to finish the install. In my case here, um, I'm actually on 18.4, so I want to download this fall 2021 DVD. And the reason for that is, again, just like the other version, uh, if I go into the web services side of it, there's actually a different uh, required service pack, in this case, KB4576800. And that's important, again, you know, if without it, uh, web services won't work correctly. And we have to, you know, we have to install it through the DVD. We can't slipstream it, meaning you just, you know, manually install the service pack by itself. That won't work, you know, just like the other one. Um, the other reason why the using the DVD media is important is because we've made some changes to web services to get it so it can work when the TLS 1.0 protocol is disabled on the server, which prior versions will not work without the TLS 1 protocol enabled. So we added that to the newer versions of web services and also changes so we can now use an Active Directory authorization store, which is required also for the TLS 1.0 being disabled. And that would actually be our next step. So at this point, we know that we, um, you know, depending on what version of GP we're on, you know, which media we want to be using. So the next thing we want to do, like I said, if we plan on disabling TLS 1.0 in the future, we want to go and make sure we have our AD authorization store set up. The best way to do that is to click on start, run, and then type in asman.msc, click OK, and that's going to bring up this authorization manager window. As you can see right now, I don't have any authorization stores. So the first thing I'm going to do, and this is again per our blog steps, 
is click on action and then click on options. From there, I'm gonna change this to developer mode and then I'm gonna hit okay. And then again, I'm gonna click on action and then new authorization store. And then you're gonna see a window come up like this. What we wanna do on the top here is we're gonna change this to Active Directory or Atom. And then the schema version we can actually leave default. And then I wrote down on the notepad the string I'm gonna put in for my security store. And this is directly off of the uh, DVD we have for this setup. The only thing I'm changing here is my domain is contoso.local. So that's why I have that here. That's the only part I've changed on this string compared to the blog. And why it's handy to have that in a notepad is because I'm gonna need to put this into the install of web services as well. So that way I know I'm putting it the exact same, you know, spelling and everything is identical. Otherwise the install and the authorization store will have a disconnect and you know, obviously that's not good. So this just kind of makes sure that I'm putting everything in both places the exact same way. So if I hit okay here, Oh, I guess I'll change this to two, and I'll hit OK. And I'm going to change my note here just to reflect that so I know. OK, so the, here I can see I got my GP Web Services and, uh, authorization store. And then at that point, I'm ready to install uh, my web services. So I have down here, I have my uh, my GP 2021 uh, fall DVD. So I'm ready to do the web services install. So I'm gonna right click on setup, run as administrator, and then start the, uh, the install. So for my license agreement, I'm just gonna hit uh, next or accept it and hit next. And then I'm not using multiple tenants, so I can hit next on that. And then here I want to put in my SQL ser server name. And then I'm going to put in my GP uh, system database name. And then you can either use Windows Address Authentication or SQL Authentication, meaning the SA login, and then hit Next. And then for the default install location, you can just let it go to the C program files unless you want to install it somewhere else and hit Next. And then uh, since we're using a Atom uh, authorization store, I'm going to hit this Active Directory. And then when I hit Next, I should have three fields. So for this top field here, this is actually going to be the name of my domain controller server, not the application server that I'm installing web services onto. So I'm going to go and put the name of that in there. And then uh, you can leave the port 389 default. And then again, this is the same string that uh, I put in to create the authorization store. So I'm just going to copy it here and paste it in there. And then it will create or you'll link it up web services to that when I do the install. Um, here I'm just going to put in my system account that I want to run the service for uh, web services. And then the uh, two port numbers for web services, you can just leave default to 48, 620, and 21. Hit next. And then I'm not gonna need any of that, so I'm just gonna start my install. And the reason for the, uh, you know, making sure that we have the correct service pack and DVD media when we're installing web services is when we get to the configuration wizard, which you're gonna see here in a little bit, if we don't have the correct service pack or media based on what version of Dynamic GP we're currently using, uh, when we try to when it tries to do the functional currency check, we're actually going to see a blue question mark, meaning that there's something wrong with it. And once we get past that part, um, there won't be any companies for Dynamic GP that we can install web services onto or upgrade. So this is why it's important to make sure that we have the, you know, the correct uh, DVD being used as, along with the correct service pack. That way you won't run into any of those issues. So right at this point, my web services is installed.
So I'm going to leave the configuration wizard marked, and I'm going to hit uh, exit, which will launch that configuration wizard for me. And then here I'm just going to hit next. And then it's already got my SQL Server name. Uh, it doesn't let you change it from Windows Trusted Account. So I'm just going to hit next here. And then you can see it does a check on the ISO codes and it does the functional currency. And um, unfortunately, because of the way it's set up, it checks all of your companies, uh, whether or not you're planning to install web services on them. And that's why it's important. But if we don't have the correct uh, media and service pack being used, uh, we'd see a blue question mark here on the functional currency check. And then if we were to click next past that, um, instead of getting a list of companies, like in this case, I only have the sample company, we wouldn't have any companies at all. So we wouldn't be able to finish the install or the upgrade of web services. In this case, we use the correct media. Everything's good there. So I'm going to select the um, company that I want to install onto. If we had a prior uh, version of in uh, web services already present, uh, we would get the option actually to upgrade. And then we would mark that. And then we'd be able to select um, the companies that we wanted to you know, upgrade web services on along with the system database. If you have more than one company, uh, what you'd want to do is you would actually want to highlight them all here and then hit next. And then it's just going to show you, basically you selected these companies, which is fine. I'm going to go ahead and hit next here, continue with the install. And then you're just going to see the loaders install. Uh, there's five loaders for the system database and there's four loaders for each company database in uh, that we're installing web services onto. And once this gets done installing, uh, we'll be able to verify that web services is working correctly. And this takes a little bit of time. Uh, the loaders, I'd say about maybe, I don't know, two, three minutes depending on how many companies you have. Uh, in my case here, I only have the one company, so probably about two, three minutes, I suppose, it would take. So we'll let that finish, and then we'll verify that web service is working correctly. All right, and then once the install finishes on the configuration wizard here, and we don't have any errors, we'll go and hit complete, and then it's just going to tell us yeah, it's going to stop and restart our uh, service for web services. Go and hit yes there. And then once that uh, restarts, it's just going to close our configuration wizard window here for us. And then another way to verify that your web server is installed on the GP databases is it puts a WS install status table in your uh, GP system database. So if you run a select statement against that, you'll see my system database has Five loaders installed on it. All of them are at 18.4 version. Uh, the version build won't necessarily uh, correspond with the actual version of GP that you're on, and that's fine. We're more looking at the uh, major and minor. And then each company that you have installed will have four loaders such as this. In my case, I only have one company, so I only have the four for the T18.4. But if you have more companies, you might see those here as well. So then at this point, we have web services installed using the um, AD Authorization Manager Store. So what we want to do then is just go and just make sure that web services is actually working for us. So just go into the Security Console. And first time here, I'm going to hit Select Applications. And I see Security Service on top. I see Dynamic GP Web Services there, which is great. Hit OK. And then when it lets me, it's going to go ahead and expand out these. And then I have uh, my Microsoft Dynamic GP Web Services. Click on Policy. And then I can see my list of policies there. And another way you can check is by right-clicking on the Entity ID assignments and hitting Add. And then I don't actually have to create it. I'm just going to create select uh, like an entity type like Customer. And then my, I only have the one company. And then you should see it pull that data from the company. So here you can see my list of customers. That's just another way to check that web services is installed um, and working correctly with the GP databases is I can pull data from it. And at this point, um, 
you know, that's basically web services. That's getting it installed. Uh, when I close the Dynamic Security Console, I'm going to hit yes, so I don't have to keep doing that. And the other thing you can check, too, is the Exceptions Console. Um, just go ahead and expand that, and there'll be a system and uh, validation exceptions. And in this case, I don't have any actual exceptions, but I should see these windows just showing today's date. And that's basically uh, web services. Um, hopefully that gives a little more information on the install and upgrade of it, especially depending on what version of GP you're on, as well as the creation of the AD authorizations manager store. Thank you, and good luck with this install and the upgrade.